Hey everybody, it's Mr. Zabo. So for LT29, we are multiplying and dividing rational expressions. I plan on doing about seven or eight examples with you in this video. For anything that uh, I don't cover, make sure you ask the sub, make sure you ask me for questions later on. This is very similar to everything that we've been doing. It requires us to be able to factor. In this first example, the factoring, I'm hoping isn't too hard. I think we've seen a lot of good stuff with factoring here, but we have two different types of factoring in the first problem. The numerator, we have an x squared where a is equal to 1, so my leading term is going to be x in both of my binomials, and then what multiplies to negative 18 and adds to 3 is a minus 3 and a positive 6. In the denominator, remember this is our difference of squares. So I have an x plus 6 and an x minus 6. At this point, restricted values are the same things that we've been looking for to restrict our domain when we were talking about the reciprocal functions or we were talking about rational functions, rational equations. Okay, our x values are restricted because my denominator cannot be 0. That means x cannot equal negative 6 and x cannot equal 6. The last part of this is the same thing that we were doing with our rational functions. I want to simplify. x plus 6 is a factor in both the numerator and denominator. They reduce, leaving me with x minus 3 over x minus 6. The second example is just a harder problem to factor. Okay, so we've got to make sure we think this one through. And it's going to be trinomial into two binomials in both the numerator and denominator. And if I'm looking to see my first two terms, or my first terms in my binomial, need to multiply to 2x squared, I'm going to just separate those into 2x and x. I'm guaranteed to make that work now. Okay. The last two terms here have to multiply to a positive 3y squared. Well, that means I'm either going to have... 3y first and y second, or y first and 3y second. It does matter, though. That's where I have to start really just guess and check. I've got to figure out what's going to work. And so it might take you a little bit of time to look through that and work through that as far as factoring. In this case, it matters because whatever I get when I multiply my first term with my last term, and then my second term, my two middle terms, those are going to give me like terms. When they combine, they need to get me negative 5x. In this case, that means this should be a negative 3y, and this should be a negative y. Together, those are going to multiply to positive 3y squared. And then 2x times negative y is going to be a negative 2xy. Negative 3y times x is a negative 3xy. There's my negative 5xy. So that's how you can check. Okay, I'm not going to require you to check, but I strongly, strongly encourage it. And then in my denominator, it's a similar process. x squared is my first term. That's going to be my x and my x. Negative 2y squared, it's a guess and check. Okay, now it's negative. One of these factors is positive, one is negative. This one winds up being a negative y and a positive 2y. That'll multiply to my negative 2y squared here. The x and x multiply to my positive x squared. When I multiply middle terms, we're good. Okay. The last part on this page that we have to address is this fact that my denominator can't equal 0. Those are my restrictions. That means x minus y cannot equal 0. Well, then my restriction is x cannot equal y. Add y to both sides here. Okay. x plus 2y cannot equal 0. If I subtract 2y from both sides there, my restriction is that x cannot equal negative 2y. When I reduce the factors that are in common, which is x minus y, I'm left with 2x minus 3y over x plus 2y. Why don't you guys go ahead and look down here at number 1. Hey, I'm just going to start talking about number one. Hey, if, I, if I do this one with you guys as well, and then you guys are going to do two, three, and four here. Hey, there's three things. This is already factored. I have it set up that way specifically for a purpose. 
because I can reduce a number of things here, but I want to come up with my restrictions. X cannot equal. Well, there's two things X can't equal. The 10 doesn't matter in my denominator. This matters. That means if X were 2, my denominator would be 0. X cannot equal 2. This matters. If X were negative 2, this denominator would be equal to 0. So X cannot equal 2. X cannot equal negative 2. From here, it's a matter of simplifying and reducing. X minus 2 is a common factor. But this is also a fraction that can be reduced. If I reduce 4 over 10, 2 goes into 4 twice, 2 goes into 10 five times. Remember, that's 2 times 2. This is 2 times 5. Well, my 2's reduce leaves me with a 2 over 5. So my simplified expression here has 2 times x plus 7 in the numerator. It has 5 times x plus 2 in the denominator. Here's what we should get. You guys are going to try numbers 2, 3, and 4 here. The video is going to continue on to page 2. So if you want to pause it now and try 2, 3, 4, that's a good, a good time to do that. The answer key will be posted in Google Classroom. Okay, here on page 2, we're only going to work on this example together in this video. You guys are going to try 5, 6, 7, and 8 together, or on your own. Okay. There's, again, I need a simplified form and I need restrictions just like what we were working on previously. I want to factor everything. So I have to look at each part of this when I'm multiplying fractions and we multiply straight across. Okay. X squared plus X minus 6, that is going to factor into X plus 3 times X minus 2. The numerator, the denominator then is still my X minus 5. I like to write it in those parentheses grouped, but it's not required. Okay. We are multiplying. x squared minus 25, both perfect squares. I have x plus 5 times x minus 5. x squared plus 4x plus 3, I can factor that. I get an x plus 3, I get an x plus 1. Next thing I want to do is look, take from this my restrictions. These values in my denominator are going to give me all of my restrictions on x. None of those can be, can, no, no values of x can make that denominator 0. Okay? So if x were a positive 5 here, I'd have a denominator of 0. Can't happen. x can't be 5. If x were negative 3, I'd get a 0 in the denominator. x cannot be negative 3. If x were negative 1, that factor would be 0. I cannot have a negative 1 value for x. Once I get my restrictions, that's when I start reducing. Okay, and I can reduce anything in the numerator with any factor in the denominator, if they match. Okay, so as I look at this, I see I have an x plus 3 in the numerator and the denominator. That's going to reduce. Okay, I have an x minus 5 in the denominator, and I have an x minus 5 in the numerator. That's going to reduce x minus 2 in the numerator doesn't reduce. I don't have an x minus 2 in the denominator anywhere. Same thing with x plus 5. Same thing with x plus 1. That's in the denominator. There's no common or matching factor in the numerator to reduce. So what am I left with? No equal sign this time. These are expressions, not equations. x minus 2 times x plus 5 in the numerator. I don't have to multiply that out. I can just leave it. And I just have x plus 1 in the denominator. Even though my restricted values include more than just negative 1, I have to include the values that were reduced or removed from the expression. Now is a good time for you to go ahead and practice 5, 6, 7, and 8. If you would like to pause and try those now, go for it. The video will continue on to page 3 with a couple of examples on page 3. Okay, so page 3 is talking about dividing rational expressions. And what we have to recall is that when I am dividing fractions, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. Okay? We are going to keep our first fraction, our first ratio, the same, okay? x minus 2 over x plus 1. But now, instead of dividing, I am going to change it to multiplying. And 
I want the reciprocal of my second fraction. So instead of x plus 5 over x plus 1, I'm going to write it as x plus 1 over x plus 5. Okay. So when I reduce, because all of these are grouped, okay, I can reduce the same way, x plus 1 over x plus 1. Okay, that reduces. This then simplifies to x minus 2 over x plus 5. That's my simplified fraction. What you have to be super careful of here are your restrictions. Okay, I still have restrictions, and now this gets a little more complicated. My restrictions are going to come from my original denominator here. X can't be negative 1. My original denominator here, now that's not a new restriction, so it's not a big deal in this problem. But it's also going to come from the reciprocal here. X is also not going to be equal to negative 5. Okay. So what do I mean by that? How do we address that? Okay. I first look at these problems and I come up with my restrictions. Okay. If I'm factoring this, x squared minus 1 factors to x plus 1 times x minus 1 over x plus 1. I am dividing by x squared minus 2x plus 1 factors into x minus 1 times x minus 1 all over x plus 1. So if I factor everything first, my restrictions are going to come in all of my denominators here. Now, they, again, these happen to be the same. So my restriction for these original problems are that x cannot equal negative 1. I can go down and write that restriction. But before I can simplify, I cannot simplify through division. I have to change this division to multiplication by the reciprocal. But I keep the first ratio the same. Okay. And then I pause for a second, and I have new restrictions. Now x can't be equal to positive 1 because of the denominator here. So I have a second restriction. That's when I can start reducing. I have an x minus 1 that reduces with x minus 1. I have an x plus 1 that reduces with an x plus 1. Even though I have a second x plus 1, I don't have a second x plus 1 in the denominator. You can only reduce that factor once. The x plus 1 remains in the numerator. The x minus 1 remains in the denominator and we're simplified, and we have our restrictions. Last thing we have to talk about on this video are complex fractions. These are fractions within fractions. Okay? And what we want to think about with fractions within fractions, these are division problems. Okay? This big fraction bar is going to be my division symbol. Okay? I have my numerator gets written first, 8x squared y over x plus 1. I like to group those with the parentheses. Denominator is 6xy squared over x plus 1. Then I can change it to multiplying by the reciprocal. Now, I have 8. Anytime I have x squared, sometimes it's easier to look at it as x times x. Expand that times y. That's my entire numerator. My denominator is just x plus 1. That's why I like to group it. Okay? Times, I have now x plus 1 in my numerator. My denominator is 6 times x times y squared, which is y times y. I have restrictions here. x cannot equal negative 1. Okay? That comes from here and here. But now, there are values that would make my denominator 0 here x cannot equal 0. If x were 0, 6 times 0 is going to be 0. But I have a restriction on my y value now as well. That y value cannot equal 0. So I have three separate restrictions to deal with here. And then I can reduce. x plus 1 and x plus 1 can reduce. This x can reduce with an x here. That x doesn't have another variable or another x to reduce with. That's why I like writing x squared out as x times x. Now, if it's x to the 200th, it doesn't work. Now you have to use your exponent properties. Okay. I have 1y in my numerator. I can reduce that with 1y in my denominator. Okay. 
Okay. And then again, eight and six reduce. They 